What is going on, guys? Welcome back. I want to do a video for you tonight. Thank Kirk Ford for sending me over some information. Obviously, taking a look at this image, it's meaningful in the fact that we're going to talk about EA maybe losing its grip on the NFL exclusivity. Now, there's a couple different agreements that intertwine here, and it's a complicated situation, really, between EA, the NFL, ESPN, and the collective bargaining agreement. Now, for those of you that don't know, and if you're a Madden gamer, you may not know, in 2006, ESPN signed a deal with EA for 15 years of them using ESPN in gaming. Now, the reason I say if you're a Madden gamer, you may not know that is because we really never got in Madden the type of presentation that other games got as far as integrating ESPN into the game. The way maybe, say, 2K5 did, or other games like the show have, we just kind of got our standard presentation. But that doesn't mean the agreement's not there, and the dating of it is relatively important. So, the CBA went through, or goes through, the 2020 season, and if you think about it, the start of the 21 season would be when EA loses, it's where the license expires with, ESPN. Now, to me, that makes a lot of sense. If you're trying to formulate all these complicated things together, you want to have them stop at the same point. That way you can go and renegotiate them out. If you want to maybe not have ESPN anymore, maybe you're going to lose the NFL agreement. Why would you pay for ESPN if you don't have the NFL or vice versa? So it's interesting that 2021, at least the start of that season, seems to be the year everything comes full circle. Now, with the exclusivity, the problem becomes when the lockout happened, we never got real concrete information that EA had extended it. And if you remember back a couple years ago when that happened, a lot of people thought Madden wasn't going to release or Madden wasn't going to have players, whatever the case may have been. We all know, regardless, EA has continued the license. They've renewed it, although we don't have any concrete evidence of what the contract was. Their contract with the NFLPA and the NFL really can't extend beyond the collective bargaining agreement because that's kind of where the whole league starts and stops. Now, with that said, as far as the title is concerned, there is one thing that can actually change all of this. And interestingly enough, it's Colin Kaepernick. Because if he wins his collusion lawsuit against the NFL... The NFL Players Association can actually opt out of the collective bargaining agreement almost instantly, if not instantly, and if that were to happen, all these licenses would have to be reopened. Now, that doesn't mean, I was. I guess I would assume that that doesn't mean that even though they're reopened, they don't have to be rebid. They just have to either be reassessed, and that's one thing that EA has made sure has been done. It's the reassessment of the license. They've changed how much they pay for the exclusivity just about every single year because to be honest with you it almost was a bad business move as much as they paid because the game doesn't generate that much revenue to cover this massive amount of money that they pay the nfl to make sure they're the only player in the market and for that matter even if it comes up we don't have any idea that another gaming company would be ready to put up the money to buy the license to start a game. Because if 2K, which was the biggest player at the time in 2005, making profit off NFL 2K15 with a game in the market, if they didn't see the possibility of putting up major money to continue their product then, it seems inconceivable that, that a company without a game would be sitting here now ready to put just as much, if not more money, into it and not have a product ready to go to market. If anything, to me, the most likely scenario, aside from Kaepernick's lawsuit, would be that the NFL just removes exclusivity altogether, doesn't allow this to come back up through the collective bargaining agreement, and then we go back to where we were before. The reason I think that's probably the most realistic chance we have is because we all know the NFL attendance is down, the NFL revenue is down. They're going to look for ways to open up their financial stream. And of course, the best way to do that is to get your name on other things, generate revenue from other medias, from other markets. Now, they've had some ways to do it in the past. They had like an educational game that it came out that they gave the license in terms of grants to. So they can actually still kind of have those things going. But for the most part, I would think unless we get to that conversation where the NFL concerns itself with quality, because that was also a big part of the 2K EA situation. It was the quality of the products as far as prices were concerned. Some of the people inside the NFL thought you could not have a realistic 
comp- you know, competition in the marketplace when one game is twenty dollars and the other game is sixty, and that sends a mixed message to the consumer of which one's going to be better. That's really, from what my understanding is, shot this whole thing in the foot. Was when two K came out and lowered the price of their game. That started the battle that the NFL literally just had to end by saying, "Okay, only one of you is going to get to play now." EA had the money, the power, and the bidding to do it. To date, I don't think any other company has the mindset of doing it. And the way it's went, again, going back and knowing that EA has had to reevaluate and redo these deals, I don't know that any other company would. It's a very detailed topic, and there's a lot to it, more than I'm going to cover in 5 minutes and 45 seconds. But I'd love to know your thoughts on this. I appreciate you checking it out. I'll be back in the week with more commentary.